We can have a lot of fun. I'm a man. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Juice Motor Parts tutorial. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, changing the main bearings of your engine. So there are four main bearings, right? Before I get into specifics of the bearings, I want to talk about how you can access them on your motorized bicycle engine. So what I have here is the crankcase assembly with everything basically removed except the bearings. Um, in order for you to get access to the crankcase, you obviously need to remove the upper engine assembly. See the, see the descriptions um, for an article that I'll, I'll point you to to getting all those out. And then afterwards, there are eight bolts that you have to remove. There's one here, one here, one, two, three, underneath the clutch assembly. Uh, there's four here, five, six. Whoops, did I say eight? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, seven, eight. So there are eight bolts here. After that, um, you can pretty much peel the crankcase apart. So, in order to get these bearings out, I have a few methods uh, that I like to do. They're fairly easy, once you have the right tools, of course. So I want to take your attention over here to my $20 Arbor Press from Harbor Freight. Excellent. Um, if you have access to an Arbor Press, that'll make things tons, tons easier. So what I like to do is, you, you know, you get a socket of some sort. Um, you place your crankcase on, put the socket on there. Once you line things up properly, you just hold them, pull them, and it comes out so easy. You know, it saves you a lot of the a lot of the guesswork, and you can you can just push it out. So that's um that's an easy way of of uh, of getting all the bearings out, You're just using this arbor press and a socket. Um, however, not everyone is fortunate enough to have an arbor press. So what you could do as an alternative is um you can use a rubber mallet a socket, you know, put this on a wooden surface, put one of the crankcases. I I'm not too fond of this method because it involves actually, you know, impacting the crankcase. You know, as you can end up cracking something, you know, or, you know, the metal could become fatigue of some sort, or become fatigue. So, use this method only if you really have no other, other option. Sometimes these, um, these bearings also are really stuck in place. So what you can do is uh, put some heat around this area um, when the bearings on the inside and then just try to hit it out you know in one hit or so the less impact you expose the crankcase to the better it is so that's fine uh, after you've after you've done that with all of the with all of the bearings I want to talk a little bit a little bit about um, which bearings that which bearings you want to get so here are two examples of, um, of of some bearings that you can get here's an SKF 6202 uh, 2RS bearing and here's an FAG uh, so that was called, yep, yeah, FAG. Um, F -A, yeah, that's it. Okay, yep. So here's an uh, FAG 6202. These are both excellent quality bearings that I highly recommend. Um, now, the important thing about choosing a bearing is the, um, is, is the second part of the model number, 2RS C3. Those are important aspects. Um, the 2RS represents the seals. So 2RS stands for two rubber seals. You want to get all four bearings with two rubber seals on it. And um, what, what that does is it protects the grease on the inside. However, um, when you put, for, for the two crankcase bearings, that are, those are the ones that go on the inside of the crankcase, you want to peel, peel off the rubber seal so that you can expose the bearings to the lubrication from the fuel and oil mixture inside the crankcase. Uh, the clutch bearings, which are these, actually, um, they, they remain with the rubber seals on, on both sides. So uh, that's an important thing, that's something important to remember. So for the inside crankcases, um, crankcase bearings, you want to make sure you remove the rubber seals. Um, the second aspect of the model number is the C3 part. Um, C3 represents the heat rating. So what that means is uh, bearings man bearing manufacturers, the specially designed bearings with a certain with certain tolerances um, on the inner races, so that they're somewhat resistant to thermal expansion. Well, not really resistant, but they can take heat, and and the heat won't really mess up. The, um, the the bearing internals, so it's it's specially designed for uh, for heat applications. So you you want a C3 uh, bearing design, because you know you'll be you could be starting your engine up from a really cold environment and then it's going to go straight to hot. Traditional bearings um, they could work. I haven't really tried them yet, but it's just um, I've always tried the C3 bearings and they seem to work fine. It it just it's just that these bearings are specially designed to be in heat applications. 
So uh, look out for those. I'll also link those um, in the description. And we also have them at JuiceMotorParts.com. We have these bearings actually, the SKF 6202 2RS C3 bearings. Excellent. I've used them in a few rebuilds and they work perfectly fine. After you're done, um, you want to do the same thing again. You can either use your arbor press. And after you've used your arbor press, you just do the same thing. Got it over here. And one, two, three, you just press them in. It goes in, you know, smooth as butter. Boom. You know, you're ready to roll. Don't forget to pull off the seals. Or, um, here's another method that actually works just fine. And what you do is you would put one of these crankcases inside of an oven around 300, 350 degrees. And after you've done that, um, the, the heat from the oven causes the entire crankcase to, to expand by such a small amount. Um, while that's happening, you put a bearing inside the freezer. What that does is the really sub, you know, the cold temperatures causes the bearing dimensions to shrink just by just a tidbit. And then after you take out your crankcase from the oven at 350 degrees, you take your bearing and you can just drop it right in, or even with, min with minimal effort, you know, just tap it in. So those um, subjecting the crankcase to, to a hot environment and, you know, cooling down the bearing, you know, the bearing shrinks from the cold, the crankcase expands from the heat, and it just slips right in. And when the temperature gradients equalize out, you get that nice snug fit, and that's what you're looking for. And, uh, you know, you could, sometimes it still may be a, a bit hard, but it's definitely, t it's definitely a, lot, a lot easier. So as long as you can get the bearing cool, really cold, and the crankcase hot, you can just kind of slip things in into place, and that, that helps out a lot. Um, after you're done, you install your crankshaft, and you install all the bolts, and at the end, what it should look like is like this. Here is a fully assembled bottom end. That's the crankcase on the bottom. This one actually has 6202 um, SKF bearings installed, and you, you'll notice a huge difference in vibrations um, smoother, you know, there's no vibrations, and you'll notice things, um, the engine will probably run, you know, a hell of a lot smoother, everything would sort of equalize itself out, and um, you get a longer lasting engine. Alright guys, so that's how I want to conclude this video on changing the main bearings. There's two methods to, re to removing the bearings as a, quick, as a quick summary. You can use an Arbor Press, which I highly recommend, these are like 20 or $30 at Harbor Freight. Um, or if you don't have access to that, you can hit, you can kind of bash it in. Well, I want to say bash, and that sounds terrible because you really don't want to bash it. But um, you can hit hammer it in of some sort, try to hammer it in, whatever you want to call it, with a uh, with a mallet or a hammer. You know, you just put it on a nice surface and get it in there. Just make sure at the end that the bearings are flush with that um, with its with its hole. Make sure it doesn't rub against the crankshaft, and then reassemble. In install the install the the crankshaft and install the clutch, uh, the clutch shaft, and then you should be good to go. Bolt up the eight bolts, and you're right, ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, this has been a Juice Motor Parts tutorial. I want to thank you guys for your watching. Please leave any comments. Read the description, of course, before watching the video. Uh, preferably even to get a general knowledge of things before you start getting your hands wet with all of this stuff. So thanks again for watching, guys. And as always, get juiced. We can have a lot of fun. I'm a man.